Hey, everybody. We're almost done with 2020. I think everyone will agree that that's pretty exciting. Right, Dave? I think that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, safe to say, maybe, I, you know, I, I, so first of all, all those jokes that I made last year about having, you know, 2020 vision and, and look in, in, a, in, you know, in a year and a half, we'll be able to say we have 2020 <laughs> hindsight and all that stuff. Like those yeah. jokes didn't age all that well. Uh, it turns out, but we really don't know what's going to happen in 2021. So I'm not I, like, I sure I'm, I'm fine with this year being kind of done in, in the books yeah. and that's great. I, I'm, I, and I am hopeful that the future is a little easier and, and, but it's different. It, it will never it, go back it will, to what it was. Well, it'll always be impacted, right? It will uh, always be, I, I we think, will get through yeah. this, not yes. back to, we will get through to normal, not back to normal. Yeah, it'll it'll just be a little different, but it'll you know, a little different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit different, but yeah. uh, but you know, we have a few weeks left in the year, and so uh, it's time we want to do our annual "Do This Stuff Before Twelve Thirty One" episode, which we also call you know "End of Year Tasks and Opportunities." Uh, and so, hang out with us today. We're going to discuss things that you must do before the end of the month, and some things you can do to save money, pay less taxes, and plan for a successful 2021. I like it. I'm looking forward to this. Are you ready, Shannon? I'm ready to small business, man. I'm ready to small business. Let's small business. He's Shannon Jean. I'm Dave Hamilton. And this is episode 306 of The Small Business Show. Well, Shannon, where do we start here? What's the first thing to do now that we're we're looking at our business? What, you know, we know that there's some things that we have to do or should do before the end of the year. So, where, what's a good place to start? Let, let's let's start. Actually, let's back up a little bit more. I wanted okay. to ask you a question. Okay, how, how was your year this year compared to previous years? Um, I know there was all kinds of, you know, complications and yes. different things, but I was looking, you know, doing end of year accounting, which we're going to talk about in a bit. And, and I was surprised because, uh, well, let me ask you that question. How, how was your year, Dave? My how was year, your, your... It, it, and I'm, I'm thinking about this with all the businesses I have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and it was, it was actually a, a, a pretty good year. Our, our That's biggest great. one, the one that I talk about all the time, which is backbeat media, uh, that, you know, March and April were definitely down months. I mean, this is a business that primarily drives its revenue from selling uh, sponsorships on podcasts and websites to that that f focus on consumers. So, you know, it we didn't shut down, but we could have, and we would have earned right. exactly the same amount of money. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. but the, but we couldn't have right because there was a lot of customer service happening then. But but anyway, we uh, by November was the best month that business has ever had. And nice. by the end of November, we were ahead year over year of where we were last November. Now, I am not necessarily convinced that we will end December ahead year over year. I think we might still be down five, maybe even 10 points. The Q4 is yeah. a big quarter for us every year in terms of our sure. bookings. Makes and stuff. Sense. So, so we may still be down a little bit. And if we are, I can I can blame at least half of it on COVID. There have been some changes in our industry that may that are affecting us, and we there are some adaptations that we may or may not need to do. Uh, but but I would say yeah, if we if we if we break even, then I will say COVID didn't really have an effect. Um, but there's probably more that we can always do for, for the business. But uh, but yeah. yeah, it. I mean, COVID has affected us. But cash flow wise and all of that, we've been very fortunate that, you know, That's we're, we're, yeah, we're in an okay, we're on okay. That's good. Yeah. Appreciate. For me, you know, um, anecdotally, I, I felt like it was much more dramatic at times. Sure. Um, but uh, when I was real, when I sat down and ran the numbers for me, it was, uh, I think we're going to be down. Oh, I will be down maybe about five points okay. a year, which is significantly better than I thought. But what I realized is trying to figure out why I was thinking like that was just my cash flow is so different this yes. year. Uh, much less steady, much more peaks and valleys. Um, when I can tell you like right now, as some states are announcing, you know, kind of new 
uh, regional shutdowns. Yeah. Well, that hurt. That hurts my business um, because people start to worry a little bit more uh, when restaurants are shutting and different things. People are like, wow, am I going to have my job? Um, discretionary income tends to tighten up, and I, I I definitely feel that. So I was a are, bit surprised. Are you feeling you know. that now? I don't. I, well, uh, I do actually. I do mean to take us on a tangent because I think listeners might yeah. be interested in hearing this. I I ask only because that type of stuff the the high end, higher end items, the, the, um, well, our, our consumer goods, right. We're up yeah. like 6% year over year yeah. spending on that, it, but, it, it, but we're down 5% on services. So like, yeah. <laughs> you know, yes. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. that, that what I noticed is that, um, it, I, more of the mid to low tier yes. uh, sales have been impacted than the higher end. The higher end have been steady. I, my quantities of sales are, were far more less, uh, uh, significantly less this year, maybe about 15 to 17%. But I think the revenue is only going to be down about 5%. Yeah. So that makes uh, sense. Yeah. 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 Because I think, and, you know, the people with, not service industry jobs, right? Because there's been, they said, what, 10 million jobs lost as a result right. of COVID, 9 million of those in the service industry. Service. Yeah. So, you know, if you are in that white collar, you know, office job type of world and you made it through thus far, you're, I mean, you're probably as safe as you would have been a year ago in your job. I don't want to say you're safe because yeah. you know, that's a whole different conversation. I would think. But, but yeah, I, you know, we, we certainly have seen... Yeah, we saw kind of the same thing. The types of sponsors, the types of things that we're getting for sure are are targeted towards that higher end, you know, I don't want to say luxury goods because, you know, something that costs 10 bucks a month may or may not be seen as a luxury. Yeah. But but it, it is that discretionary income kind of thing where it's like, yeah, I I can afford to spend this and not worry about the 10 bucks a month. Whereas, you know, that so those sorts of things. Yeah. 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 So, you know, talking about financials, I, I think that's where we should start. Uh, OK. We just talked about our own because um, and and. When I say this, you know, uh, I'm like the cobbler. The kids don't have, you know, the kids have holes in their shoes because I'm, I'm, never, I'm really not good at this part of my business. And thankfully, I'm not either. I, yeah, I've been able to, I'm a top line sales guy and I've been able to uh, make up for a lot of the problems in my bottom line financials by driving sales. And even though they tell you that's a terrible idea, it, it's kind of worked for me my whole life. Yeah, I wouldn't advise uh, people to do it, but I'm, I'm the same no. way. When, when things start to get into a little bit of trouble, the first thing I do is drive the sales higher. I, I don't look yeah. at what expenses can I cut? I do that eventually. No, no. My yeah, first yeah, instinct yeah. is, well, throw more cash at the, or <laughs> pull more cash into the business, not throw yes. more cash at it. But yeah, yeah you uh, can't grow by cutting. I, I just don't, I mean, you got to find that right. of the, of the revenue stream. But maybe even more important is, is you have to have, um, you, you've got to have, good financials to be able to uh, see what's going on. Okay. And, uh, you know, if you're looking at your P&L and your balance sheet and you're not confident in that data, well, you're not going to be able to take advantage of some of the stuff here we're going to talk in today's show. Oh, that's a good uh, point. Yeah. Yeah. And because you don't know, you don't know is, is that real? Is the, are those numbers real? Is it up to date? You know, uh, have you entered everything in that you need to have, have, has your bookkeeper or your accountant looked at when's the last time they looked at, at things yeah. to, uh, you know, to, to give it to you. Um, it, it's, it's, it's very, important that you get that stuff figured out for, before you do anything else, right? I, Cash flow I, statements, all that stuff. Yep. Yep. I think that's, that makes a lot of sense because yeah, it, yeah you need to be able to, yeah, I, I agree. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, I, think, I think so. So, so and, and, and you need to sit, just sit down and do it. And if you've been putting it off and I'm the king of putting it off, oh, you, you just have to get together. And, you know, usually December, you can, it's, it's actually a pretty good time to meet with your accountant. Um, they can make time for you after the end of the year. It's going to get start it's to get, get a little tougher and nice. tougher. Well, that, I, yeah. you know, I, we like to share action items on this show, Shannon, and usually we share them at the end, but I'm going to share one right now. And, and nice. then, and then you'll be able to figure out what you're going to do. And my action item is in fact that today, 
call or email your accountant and set up an appointment for either later this week or early next. Now we're, you know, we're recording this on the 8th of December. So the 9th, you know, you want a day or two between today and when you meet with your accountant to do all of the things that we've started talking about and that we'll keep talking about to pull all your records together, to pull your questions together. But you right, st- right. you want to make sure that you meet with your accountant, say by the 15th, 16th, 17th of the month, because you want to give yourself time after the meeting to get the things done that you and your accountant decide you need to do before the end of the year. So that's our action item, or at least my action item. Maybe you have one too. Yeah, I like it. That's it. It's great. Like right away, call or email your accountant and say, I want to talk before the end of the year. They're probably not going to call you today. So you, you almost almost guaranteed to have that built in time to get your stuff together. <laughs> so you can yeah. even pause oh, the great. episode now, call them, but just don't forget to unpause so that you know what. what yeah. And, and it's a good kind of good segue. You know, Dave and I are not accountants. We're not no. bookkeepers. Uh, any advice you get from us, you should definitely back up uh, with your accountant, your bookkeeper, your attorney, whoever. Um, this is based on our personal experience and things that we've often done wrong. So it's yeah, yeah. always good to <laughs> We get, learn by mistakes, uh, you know. We, yeah, we love yeah. mistakes, but there's a reason we love them. It's because we've learned from them. We'd rather right. not make them again. So Correct. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, and then one of the other really important things that I frequently miss because I'm driving these top line sales numbers is who owes you money. Now is the time you need to look at your accounts receivables and, you know, is uh, make sure they're as current as you possibly can get. Right. Uh, maybe have those phone calls and, and remind people that, Hey, if you want to get that right off, you know, before the, you need to pay my bill. Um, and I, I often mm. think too, wait, the, wait, the last, I- I want to, I want to pause here because you just, you, you passed over something that I think is really important when you're looking at, you know, when I saw your agenda, you had on there, you know, take care of the write-offs before the end of the year. And, and that's true. I saw it as write off from our side, the people that that won't collect, but there is that other side of the write-off that, that is your sales pitch to get someone to pay their bill. And that's the, if they pay it, they get to write it off before the end of the year. Now they may tell you they're on the accrual basis and they can write it off anyway. That's true. But then they Maybe. do have to yeah. pay you, uh, you know, otherwise the, the, the IRS gets mad about things like that. So, um, yeah, 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 that's no, I right. I think it's good. I like and, it. and, and then I, I, from our standpoint, if you know, if they owe you money and if you're just not confident that they're going to pay you, you know, t- it, take the, the, uh, the write off for the bad debt. You know, you can always book it later if they do eventually pay you. But, um, uh, I wouldn't wait. Now that would uh, only be if you're on the accruals method. If you're on a cash basis accounting, there is no write off for bad debt to take, right? As far as I understand, because you didn't that's a good question. You didn't book yeah. the revenue, so what? What would the write off be? I don't think there would be. I mean, well, if, if, if you booked it, if you booked it, let's say if you're in the uh, if you have costs associated with that, if you're in the inventory business and you shipped out, sure. Uh, X that had a, uh, you know, a $10,000 value, let's say, yep. and you never got paid. You certainly should be able to take that. Uh, yeah. Your uh, cost on that, that thing. You're yeah. But correct. That, you would correct. have that anyway, if you were on the cash basis, but maybe you, you've yeah. always been it or mostly been in the inventorying business. So you've probably correct. always had to do accruals. Is that right? Yeah, it depends on a uh, particular situation, but, Got it. but very, okay. very common. Yeah, very okay, common. so that's why you're thinking of it that way. It makes sense. Yeah. I, I've stayed away from accruals, although there's one business that we have where we might actually re- be really smart to move to accruals. Sometimes, yeah. It's yeah a, well, if you're, if, you're, yeah, if you're holding cash, that it, yeah, yep. anyway, yep. Sometimes it can help you. And so uh, I'll segue uh, for a moment and talk about, I, I think that there has probably never been a better year the year of the pandemic to take big juicy write-offs than there is this year. I think that the expectation from your bankers, your financial partners, the IRS uh, are very wide and open to the fact that everybody struggled this year. Uh, We're not going to be surprised when we see some large write-offs. So if you have been thinking of, and you have the cash or you have the wherewithal to do it, uh, I think this is a great year to expense uh, 
additional things. There's actually some increased benefits out there with the IRS this year, I believe, for you can take larger uh, chunks of oh, the write-offs really? and expense things Yep, uh, due to the pandemic. So you really should talk to your accountant, um, especially if you're in the inventory business. You know, uh, yeah. if you have a warehouse and there's a bunch of stuff that you've been sitting on and you're just thinking, wow, you know, I, I didn't want to show this write-off on my books. So I've kind of held and tried to sell this stuff. 2020 is the year, That's in my right. opinion. Yeah, you're right. I, I mean, it's hard to predict, but I I, I, I like your logic that if you're if there's a year to take that, I don't want to say questionable write off, but but no, write off no. that would potentially trigger more questions, which is different from yeah, a questionable right. write off, right? But you Correct. know th those things that you know it. Even when we do everything right, we still don't like it when the IRS asks us what we did. And this year sure feels like one of those years where they may not be asking as often because uh, because it some of it is really obvious. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. like this. This is good. This is good. Hey, yeah, Shannon, I, I want to so. keep. Yes. I, I know. I like. I'm actually really eager to get to some of these things on the list, especially like the the, the funding of retirement accounts because this is something. I've been getting better at uh, over the past couple of years, but I'm not quite there. So I definitely want to talk about that. What I want to do next, if it's okay with you, is talk about our two sponsors. Yeah, let's go. All right. Look, you know, here at the Small Business Show, we are obsessed with efficiency. It's the most important thing. We're small business owners. It means we have small teams. Sometimes it's just one of us. But, you know, we need to get our stuff done quickly, efficiently, and accurately. And a lot of times, efficiently and accurately are things that are at odds with each other. That is not the case, thanks to our first sponsor here, Text Expander at textexpander.com slash podcast. Because what Text Expander lets you do is take those things that you send out pretty regularly, and you can have lots of them. And put them into Text Expander. All those little bits of text. It could be as simple as a phone number, an email address, your address, things that are important that you do often and that you want to get right. But it could also be customer service responses, sales inquiry responses, FAQ responses, all of those things, right? And instead of digging in your sent folder to find something to copy and paste and mess with the formatting and all of that, don't mess with it. Stop doing that. Instead, use Text Expander. You put that snippet in Text Expander, and then you just go ahead and invoke it. Now, you can invoke it with a snippet by typing a little bit of text and having it expand into the bigger bit, or you can just choose it from a menu, whatever you want. And what's cool is not only is Text Expander available on Mac, Windows, Chrome, iPhone, and iPad, but it also allows you to sync your snippets amongst all your devices and amongst the devices of your team members, too. So you got to check it out. Go to textexpander.com slash podcast to learn more. And at that link, because you're a small business show listener, you get 20% off your first year. So go check it out. Textexpander.com slash podcast. Our thanks to Text Expander for sponsoring this episode. Next up is Headspace at headspace.com slash SBS. That's where you're going to go to get a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. Because here's the deal. You deserve to feel happier. And Headspace is meditation made simple. And that's why you want to go to headspace.com slash SBS. Because life can be stressful even under normal circumstances. And 2020 has challenged even the most difficult of life. Right? Like, things are crazy right now. And your business is crazy probably pretty crazy right now, perhaps crazy in a good way, perhaps crazy in a bad way. You need stress relief that goes beyond quick fixes. And that's Headspace because Headspace is your daily dose. It's also my daily dose of mindfulness. I've been using Headspace for years, long before they ever even approached us about becoming a sponsor because they have these guided meditations built into this easy to use app. And Headspace is one of the only meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research. So it's very cool. Whatever the situation, Headspace really can help you feel better. If you're overwhelmed, great. Headspace has a three-minute SOS meditation for you, so you're not worried about how much time it's going to take. You need some help falling asleep, great. Headspace has wind-down sessions that their members swear by. 
Are you a parent with kids? Headspace even has morning meditations you can do with your kids. Their approach to mindfulness at Headspace can reduce stress. It can help sleep. It can boost your focus and it can increase your overall sense of well-being. It's fantastic and you really need to check it out. And again, you get that one month free trial at headspace.com slash SBS. And that's the best deal offered right now. So go headspace.com slash SBS. Our thanks to Headspace for sponsoring this episode. Right on. Now, now we're going to talk about uh, a really uh, one of my favorite areas and a really interesting uh, category. So the, the question I always ask, you know, is would you rather pay the money to the government or give it to your employees? Ooh. Or, you know, and and because you're going to do one way or another, right? You're going to pay it in taxes. And you're generating revenue, your income, uh, your business tax, your your personal or can you reward your employees more? And maybe those employees, uh, like in my case, my spouse works for me and uh, I can reward her. And there's so many ways to do this with your accountants, uh, you know, kind of hand on your shoulder, if you will, advising you. Yeah, yeah. And especially if, you know, I have a lot more experience being a sole, sole proprietor, a solo preneur uh, than I used to. But after oh, yeah, selling right. my, yeah. you know, those businesses and the first thing my account says, like, well, you need to, you know, Renee's running this for you. Make sure you get her and you need to start a payroll. So she's on your payroll so that you can pay her health care, which covers you, your whole family uh, and all these machinations of it uh, that are really very important and a huge benefit. And I wish I'd set it up many years ago, <laughs> but, yeah. but there, there's a lot of rules and regulations you have to understand. It's, it's tougher if you have multiple businesses that have different uh, classifications. If one has employees, they, yeah, the IRS, they get really treats, picky. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't like, Oh, I've got one company that I can do this with, but it, no, they look at your, your kind of your portfolio. They look at the will. portfolio. Yes. Yeah. And it gets very, yeah. it, you're right. It gets very tricky. Uh, it does. when you're, when you're in that kind of scenario. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah, you yeah, should yeah. get, get that advice from your accountant. They can tell you what you can, what you can and can't do. Um, I was shocked know. last year. I, I had some, you know, some money that I needed to account for and things like that. And I was shocked at how much benefit a thing like an, a solo 401k. It's incredible. It's incredible. If you, if all <laughs> yeah. you're looking at is IRAs and things like that, you, you, you are missing the boat. And I say that because I missed yeah. the boat for so long. And the worst part is I had a guy, a financial advisor years ago, probably 20 years ago, tell me you need to set up an individual 401k. So I did, you know, and I put some money into it and I knew it was there. I mean, I didn't forget about it, but I did nothing with it until this year when I was saying to my accountant, like, well, what can we do? And yada, yada. And I said, yeah. well, you know, I have this individual 401k he says you do. And I said, yeah. He's like, well, let's go. Like, what are you, yeah. why didn't you tell me? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, especially as you get older yeah. and there's lots of makeup contributions Correct. you can do and combined with your spouse, I mean, the amount of cash, I mean, you need to have the cash flow. You of need course. to have the flow, but, uh, but if you're like you, you know, said, if you do happen to have, you know, you had a good year and we did have a good year last year, trust me, we've had our bad years, but last year turned out to be a good sure. one. And it was like, how do I not pay all of this to the government? And, right. and he was like, well, do this, this, and this. And I'm like, well, that's a lot less than I'm paying to the government. Of course, I'm also in a position, I think like you are, Shannon, where I get what I call double taxed because not only do I pay the government taxes, which I'm fine paying if I have to, but whatever my AGI is, is seen by my kids' colleges and that's how they decide whether or not I can pay, you know, how much, how much of a, a financial aid grant they're going to give us. Right. And, sure. and I, you know, we made a, I think, well, we'll find out soon what last year's taxes impact, had, but yeah. I, I know it, it will be better than it would have been had we not leveraged some of these things. So yeah, there's so yeah, many vehicles great. out there to use it, it legally. Yeah, so talk, 100%. yeah, of course. Uh, and so talk to your accountant, your financial planner, uh, you know, SEP IRAs, self-employed IRAs, another uh, vehicle you can use in certain cases. I have had, we've had those as well. The solo 401k, which is just, you know, like you said, it's an incredible way to set aside oh. money for your future. Um, and the numbers are, are shocking how it works. Um, you definitely want to get, and if you have a bunch of employees and you don't have a retirement plan, 
getting something in place, it's not that expensive. The management fees have dropped tremendously. You can probably start a 401k for a thousand bucks a year. Um, and, you know, giving everybody those bonuses, you can also give yourself those bonuses. Um, keeping, you know, the money in the family, so to speak, of all your employees and everything instead of uh, paying it all yeah. in taxes, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. think about your employees as your extended family, like you said, you can either, either give the money to them or to the government. And here's the thing. Does giving your money to the government engender any sort of loyalty from the government? Oh. No. <laughs> Does giving your money to the employees yeah. engender loyalty? Well, usually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's great. So so look at those, you know, those tax liabilities and, and just... You need to be thinking like that and get creative and uh, look at your, if you're in, if you have a fleet of vehicles and start thinking, okay, I know there are some, like I said, additional benefits for 2020 that their IRS is encouraging equipment purchases that you can, I think, write off a huge, much larger huge chunk amounts. than you normally yeah. would be able to. Um, I wonder so if my it, business it, needs a you know, plane, Shannon. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So all those things that you need to look and, and again, you, we suggest talk to your accountant just so you get some guidance and, and I, I'm famous for doing things and then following up and saying, Hey, was this okay? That's not the way to do it. You just like, I'm thinking about doing this. What does that make sense? And they'll help you tweak it a little bit to make yeah. sure everything works. I, and I will even say this, like last year, I thought I knew what I was doing. I funded our like IRAs and our Roth IRAs and like that sort of stuff. And then when it came time, uh, because you can like those things, you can fund, up until the day your taxes are due, which yeah. if you get an extension, again, we're not accountants, so please don't blame us if any of this is wrong. But generally speaking, you you don't have to fund those by 1231. It's super helpful if you have them set up by 1231. But again, yeah. there are there are some ways around it. But anyway, I had done all my stuff. I'd, you know, funded up my my IRAs and my Roth and all that stuff. And then when it came time to do this and my accountant said, wait, 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 slow down. Do you have an individual 401k? He's like, yeah. I'm like, or, I, like how many how much did you put in there? I said, zero. He says, okay, you have to now call the person, you know, the company that administers your Roth and, and IRAs and you have to pull money out. And I wound up having to pay some penalties because of the way I wanted to do things. And it was simply because I did not have the conversation this week with my accountant uh, last yeah. year to be like, hey, don't do anything. Wait until your taxes are finished and then let's figure out the plan. No, that's not necessarily what's right for you. But last year it would have been what was best for me but I didn't have the conversation the right way. I did have the conversation, but it, it, I was, I was an idiot about it. Sometimes I think I know how to do everything myself, Shannon. I know well, this is going to be a weird a entrepreneurial thing. Yeah. type thing. It's, so you it's think the you, disease, you, you, yeah. yeah, you have enough info to be dangerous, right? Well, that's, so. uh, that's what it turns out to be. And I was dangerous. I, you know, I cost myself yeah. a little bit of money and, and some, some penalties, but oh, it, it was, I've done it too. Yeah. But, it, but it, I mean, in the end it was absolutely the right move. So like, yeah. oh, okay, I'll deal. Yeah. And so also, I, I I think that if you're in any sort of inventory business or anything like that, that there's never been a better time to buy deals than the end of the year. And it may be worth shifting your end of year to another month because December in my uh looking back and historically is one of the biggest buying months because everybody else wants to dump inventory before the end of the year. They're trying to hit their revenue numbers, trying to do things. So, uh, if you're, if that's your type of business, ask yourself, you know, should, should our fiscal year end in January? Because then in December we could take advantage and save significantly if those deals are out there. And do you definitely do, you do that? Did year. you shift your fiscal year? Not with this business, but we did it with our other, you know, did my you? larger companies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I always, always said seem I, to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I know. Yeah. We, well, with us, we always had big trade shows in January and that meant we needed oh, yeah. cash for those shows. And yeah. Yeah. And so we have not, but we should be, you know, I always say, oh, it would have been easier if we shifted our fiscal year to end March 31st, you know, it would have been yep. way easier. I think, I don't know, but, you know, you just yeah, it makes you know, sense. figure it out. It makes sense. Yeah. And then one of the last things on my list, you know, is to uh, create an executive summary of the year. Uh, call it the dumpster fire of 2020. Call it whatever you want. Uh, we'll put a link in the show notes. We have an example template up uh, at businessshow.co. It's really an important document uh, for a number of reasons. One is 
it forces you to sit down create a narrative of how the year went for you start with a monologue you know this is what happened this is where we thought almost like where we talked when we started the show here dave how was your business how did things go did you sell you know what were sales like uh, did you uh, what what does your employee situation look like are y'all working remotely trust me it will be very helpful to have that document for yourself to come back and look at it but also when you're trying to tell the story of your business to a potential partner, mm. uh, financing, your bank, um, someone's, you know, a lender, whatever, because it just shows that you're, you're, it's a thoughtful you're paying attention. reflection. Yeah. You're paying attention. Yeah. And, and it is really nice to be able to go look back on those year after year and say, I used to tell myself, I'm making the same mistake every year. <laughs> you know, mm. you write down what I'm doing it. You know, I, I just can't do that again. So it, it's great. And talk about the highs and lows, you know, what, worked what didn't work what mistakes there were you know what big deals did you do um like i said employees staffing changes did you get new financing did somebody invest in your company did you sell up your business a- anything you can think of and then i always like to have a section on okay what are the opportunities for next year you know what is our you know or one year, two year, three year, five year plan. What are we What are we working on? Um, I like to ask that question to guests when they come on the show. You know, what's yeah. next for you? Are you just focused on grow, 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 or you've got a more strategic kind of thing? And it 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 helps us uh, all of us, you know. And and just being able to compare those uh, executive summaries, it's really and for me, I can't tell you how helpful it has been to to look and say, oh, okay, we are achieving this. Well, it uh, helps I get, you hack your you brain, know. right? I mean, yeah. we all get, I, I say we all because I assume it's true, but I know it's true about me. I get trapped into thinking that, okay, whatever I currently define as success or whatever I've defined as success in the past is the definition I live with going forward. And it can be really easy to hit that and then, you know, lay off the gas a little bit. It's like, well, if I hit all these things that I thought were success, this is why we like systems instead of goals. Right. Right. But but doing this executive summary, you can train yourself that you are capable of improving and doing more each year. And by looking back, you get to say, wow, look at how I remember how impressed I was with what we did back in, you know, 2005. But man, if we did that this year, it would be a disappointment. So mm, you, yeah, you get sure. to learn that your perception of what your business is doing is actually the most important thing to manage because from there, cool. everything else falls from it. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I like to start it and I just leave it on my computer and I revisit it over a, a few weeks. So like, you know, get it going here this week and just kind of leave it in draft mode and mm. try to get it wrapped up by the end of the year. Because I, I think if you sit down and try to do it at one time, you miss things. So it's nice just to be able to, you know, dip back into it. And maybe you have your managers, your supervisors say, Hey, I'm working on our executive summary for the company. Why don't you give me one for your department, uh, your division, your, you know, whatever you're in charge with, you know, uh, HR department, admin, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Te- exactly. Technical warehouse. What, what, what worked this year with you? And it, it makes you think, and it will make your employees will benefit it for, as well when you can hand that to them next year and go, Hey, here's what you wrote last year. Um, now reflect on this next year and tell us what's going on. What are your goals or what, what systems are you putting in place to increase efficiency or, you know, hit those sales numbers or whatever, whatever your uh, priorities are. It, it's just a great exercise for everyone. I have, I really, I really love it. I have a second action to share Shannon earlier. And I did this earlier this year with one of my business partners and I'm, I'm planning on doing more and more of it. You always, you are famous for saying, you get to tell your own story. And one thing that I did, and and it sounds like would be perfect to do at the end of every year, was I challenged my business partner and I said, okay, look, in two weeks, we're going to get together and meet. And bef- right before we meet, we're going to send each other an email with the story that we each told in five years about how, what we did during the pandemic to better the, to set the business up for amazing success in the future. And I, I framed it as you're at a cocktail party. Somebody says to you, wow, business X is doing amazingly well. What, what, how did you get here? Like what, what did you do that changed things? 
And that's the question you're answering. And you're not answering it to me. I'm not answering it to you. We're answering it to a stranger at a cocktail party in five years. And it took a little bit to get I like it. everybody yeah. on the same page with how to frame that because it was like, well, here's what I think we should do. No, 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 no. Tell me what we did. And, and by doing that, it was a very enlightening thing. And it also like eye opening thing for all of us. Cause it's like, Oh, wait a minute. We are actually telling the story. And now that we know the end, okay, great. Let's figure out a path to get there. So this is a good time of year to do that too. So bonus yeah. action item. That's really good. Uh, and I, I love, uh, I think that's a great place to end. Uh, as you start to wrap up the year, don't forget you as small business owners get to write your own story. So, you know, think about that narrative of how we're going to, you know, what's, what's your myth for your business and your, your, what do they call your origin story or whatever. I, mm. I just applied yeah. for this. eBay is giving out grants for small businesses. And I'm like, ah, oh, what the heck, you know? Sure. And one of their questions are like, what's your origin story? And it is very easy for me because I've already talked about this so much, but that is a great way to uh, elevate your business about what you're doing. You're not just, uh, a landscape contractor, you're not just, uh, you know, whatever, a reseller like I am or in the ad business, you're, you're, you're doing something greater than that. Create that story, wrap yourself around it, bring your employees into that narrative and it, it you put it in your marketing and it's just more authentic. And I, I love it. And I think that that's a, a great thing to, f for all of us to focus on uh, and maybe starting with that executive summary is a place yeah. to do it. No, that's, that's where you get to tell that story. But like, uh, I like your idea of encouraging other it, people in it, you know, involved in your business, either your partners or your managers yeah. or whatever it is to, to, to write their own version of the story. Well, you'll be, I'm sure you'll be amazed at how it dif may differ from yours. I and was so shocked <laughs> reading this other one. I was like, I, you know, I'm looking at it like what in the, how in the, okay, actually, wait, that's not a bad idea. You, you know, yeah. but, but it took yeah, me a minute sure. to digest this. I'm like, who are they talking? Oh, they're talking about people we hired. Ah, wait. Oh, uh, yeah. ah. You know, it was like, right. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I thought I I started that exercise thinking, this is great. I'll be able to control what happens. <laughs> and, and I mean, in a sense, I did in that I controlled that we are being more intentional about some things. But the specifics of that were very much not in, in my control, you know, and that's a great thing. That's part of the benefit of having partners. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. awesome. It's good. Well, it's great. I love going over this stuff. Um, you know, if you have some tips you'd like to share for things that you do at the end of the year, our list is certainly far from all inclusive. Uh, feedback at businessshow.co. Uh, well, the other thing we'd love for you to do at the end of the year is go leave us a, a review up at your podcast directory of choice, wherever you're listening. Um, hit that. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get uh, each week's episode up on your list of things to action items to listen to. Yeah. And, uh, we, we appreciate having you here each week. We do. It, it. You are the best part about this. I know Shannon and I, we fight over who learns the most each week. Uh, and, and it's true. We really, we do compete over this, but really we know that it's you that wins too. And we all win together. And if it weren't for you being here, we certainly wouldn't be able to learn anything. So thank you so much for, for all of that. And, um, you know, keep doing what you can do to live that charmed life. That's what we're all here for. That's yeah. Come back and see us again next. Yeah. yeah. Come back and see us again next week. We have a great guest that's going to talk all about data driven decisions, which woo, gives me goosebumps. See you next week. <laughs>